Oh, you're gonna kill me. It wasn't recording. Seriously? Yep. I don't know what happened, but it's recording now. Do you love me? Maybe you need to start it over. I think I do, because none of that recorded. That was really... We were flowing. Hi, guys and gals. It's Ben from the Threads Podcast. I'm here with my wife, Andy. We just recorded five minutes worth, and then I looked at my computer screen and realized it wasn't recording in the audio program. So I'm glad we didn't get any further than we did. Yeah. That would have been bad. Yeah. Threads Podcast, for those of you who don't know, is all about life unfiltered. We are the antithesis of the Facebook fake that you often see on your news feed as you scroll uh, or your Instagram feed, looking at all the filtered pictures. Uh, that's not what this is. Threads is all about conversations about life and uh, being open, honest, raw, transparent, and real. If you are a new listener, uh, you may want to go back and listen to the previous episode, number 34, uh, when we sat down with our friend Larry from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Um, this podcast here that Andy and I are doing tonight is not going to make much sense unless you listen to that one first. So it is Thursday night, folks. Um, not going to lie. It's late. Um, we've had a pretty interesting week. It's not been a bad week. It's just been busy. busy. We've both had to work um, different evening hours this week and... Um, you know, kids, summer, you know, Stefan's a teenager officially now. And so I like I'm his Uber driver lately. Yeah, I think we are his personal taxi service. I literally walked in from work on Tuesday night, literally worked until almost 9 p.m. I got home at 8.55. <laughs> the next thing I know, Stefan is next to me on me like a little bug. Hi, mom. How was your day? <sighs> okay, it's probably, you know, but can you please maybe drive me and Owen to a movie? <laughs> Okay. Well, at least he got to the, hey, mom, how's your day? I mean, that's yeah. good. I mean, it was good, but I do feel like he was maybe buttering me up just a little <laughs> bit. I should have said, what do you want? But all in all, he's been pretty darn respectful and good and asked to go see a movie. So he went to see Aladdin with his buddy and some some girls, some girls whatever. And we're getting to that stage. Here we go. So, so all that to say, um, it's been a pretty busy week and we are now... Um, recording so ben actually was, recording ben was whining a little bit about how he hasn't gotten to go kayaking much this week i did a little bit when stefan was buttering you up to go to the movies i was probably in the process of sinking in my kayak with our daughter yeah uh true story true story we don't think logically my daughter and i we are both dreamers and sure let's try it and she had this great idea to it was actually kind of fun. She had this great idea to go from her kayak, stand up on it, which she did just fine, and step over and get on the back of my kayak. <laughs> so this is all going very well, and I'm very impressed with her finesse because that's usually not her strong suit. But she managed to stand up on her kayak and step over onto my kayak, and she made it. And then she sat down and then we started to sink because all of the weight was on the back of my boat. Mm -hmm. So down we went. I got frustrated and frazzled and she thought I was mad at her, but I really wasn't. I you were was a little just, dramatic about the whole thing. Yeah. As I'm telling it to Andy, I was a little bit dramatic in how I told it and I made it sound like Miracle was having a rough time. She really wasn't. She took a walk. She walked home from the park around the corner and she was good but i was a little bit of a ball of stress you just, could say just just a bit yeah i had to just sit on the porch outside for a minute and collect myself and but, she you know, was fine she was totally fine she, she went up to fine. bed no she showered went up to bed and it was a fine. perfectly fine night yep so yep. but no i did not get much kayak time in you were out with your friend drinking last night. Drinking my one <laughs> beer that I had. Yes. Yep. Happy Dr hour. Drinking. Mm -hmm. No. Happy hour. It was so hot. It was, last and night. we sat outside, and I'm not sure Ooh. why, but it was 
we wanted happy hour special and we didn't want to sit right at the bar. Oh, that yes. probably would have been a more legit choice, but we did not. And it was fine at first. And then after like an hour, I was like, I'm going to die. It is so hot. <laughs> and then we went across the, the parking lot and had ice cream at DNW in the awesome. air conditioning whilst <laughs> waiting for our daughters to be done with dance. Yes. So. So. I was going to go kayaking after work, but it was so hot. Like, if I was to even load up the kayak onto my car, I'd be a, a sweaty mess just from doing that. Yeah. And then to go bake in the sun, it was yeah. just like, this is not happening. Yeah, not so much. So, tonight would have been a perfect night for kayaking, but... But you, you know, had to work. I had to work. So, that was fun. I sat at a booth at a concert series because my employer sponsored it. And I basically handed out lots of treats to kids, bouncy balls, it bubbles. It could always be worse. It could always. It was actually, truth be told, it was kind of fun. Yeah. I enjoyed hanging out and I did some networking with some of the other sponsors. See. So it wasn't all bad, but I You're would have fine. rather been in a kayak. Jason called me a big baby because I was frustrated about last night not being able to go kayaking. Well, Jason, you're not wrong, so... Well, wow, thanks. I mean... I feel the love. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, on that note, we we did a thing a couple weeks ago. Larry from Bowling Green, Kentucky, uh, decided to come up for a picnic that our other podcast put together, the GR Rideshare Adventures podcast. Um, Larry's been a super fan of that podcast, and uh, he just happened to hear some banter and chatter about threads on that podcast, so he started listening to threads as well. So um, that was cool. So Larry came up for a picnic and got to hang out with all the other Uber and Lyft drivers in the area that came out. And then he stuck around and recorded an episode of Threads with us. It was a ton of fun. He just such a genuine, kind guy. Um, just one of those salt of the earth kind of guys. So that was a lot of fun to sit down and record that episode. So any initial thoughts from you on the interview with Larry? Well, first of all, I really like Larry's accent and it was very, um, very soothing to listen to him talking. And then I was kind of surprised that um, it didn't come up until the end that Larry had had a career like right? doing radio. Like one of his first jobs was a DJ, a disc jockey. Also, side note, I was impressed that you kind of knew some country music star names. Merle Haggard? Yeah. I was like, wait, how do you know who that is? I only know because one of my professors played some songs for a presentation in college. Um. Hashtag, I thought you knew some kind of pop culture, but that's not even really pop culture. But still, that's I was like sort of surprised. I'm not going to lie, because you, do, you don't usually know stuff like that. I don't. If if my survival depended on my knowledge of pop culture, I would be so dead. That's why you married me. Yes. Because I get all these references. And why you're friends with Jason, because, you know, Jason gets all that stuff, too. Yeah, he sure does. And then he thinks that I know things about The Office and... But clearly, I didn't. Side note, I passed some of those trivia questions. I just want to say that. And I don't even watch The Office that much. Yeah. So I've seen it some. Now, I have time. to give Jason a little bit of credit because when I was going to Planet Fitness, I did bring my tablet a couple of times and I did watch two episodes of The Office. Two. That's about as far as I got, though. Two. 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 And I went to Planet Fitness about two times, too, in my entire subscription that's but, not that's not totally true. It's not. Maybe more than two. Yeah. But yeah, that's okay. Planet Fitness, they get a lot of my money. Not anymore. Not it's anymore. My, well, my money now. So. I mean, it's yeah, you need to I cancel yours when you can. I know. Anyway, so Larry, back to the episode. To the episode. Yeah. So I really liked Larry's um, accent. That was really cool. Um, Larry just seems like a pretty cool, like, quality guy. Um I guess I was just really struck, too, by um, just, um, sorry, I don't like saying um, but I totally am, just how great of a guy he is, yeah. given um, his absent dad, mm-hmm. most of his early childhood. I mean, it sounds like he has some memories, but 
just having a parent that has mental illness and alcohol problems and you know being incarcerated and things like that like and dying young and dying super young it doesn't sound like he had a super great example to follow so that speaks to you know his own resiliency as a person or you know i'd be curious like what other positive male role models did he have yeah, no in kidding. his life growing up because he managed to be a pretty decent guy mhm so I don't know. I thought that was really like that's those that really cool just to hear um you know how you know how he's living his life now and yeah and things like that. So And part of his early childhood story is when when he was young his parents divorced and um that's something that I am just not familiar with. Like my parents have been together for many years. I mean they married at 18 and they're so stubborn and I know they love each other, but I think their stubbornness also helps keep them sealed together. But, um, I don't have much exposure to divorce. My brother, Corey has been married, uh, for man. Well, 18, Logan's almost 16, 16, so. 17 years. Who knows? Um, and my brother, Alex, I had the privilege of, uh, doing his wedding and, yeah, divorce just isn't something that we've had to deal with. The most, I mean, the only people closest to me that are divorced would be my grandparents on my dad's side. They divorced when I think the kids were in, I don't know, teenage years. So I'm sure after seeing the impact divorce had on his family, I'm sure that played into things. Um, but then my mom's parents, they were together forever as well. And just long lineage of long lasting relationships. So when I hear about divorce, part of me just doesn't quite get it. Yeah, that's fair. Well, and I, I think that kind of goes back to your shelteredness a little bit. Not that yeah. that's your fault at all, but I think you don't realize how uncommon that is too, to like have such an intact family. Yeah. So to speak. I mean, I just think of my friends, and there are certainly far more friends that have parents that are divorced than there are that parent that have parents that are still together. Yeah. Like I think of my coworkers. I think of Jason. I think of, um, I mean, there's so many different people that either have been divorced or parents have been, and it's yeah, it's crazy to me. Yeah. But for you, like, that's just, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's pretty normal for me. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean. Your parents divorced. Yeah. You were in high school? No. No, I was almost, I was 11, I yeah. think. Yeah. Okay. So, so like seventh, sixth or seventh grade? I was in fifth grade. Okay. Yep. It was like spring break between in fifth grade hmm. and so my brother was seven and my sister was like three or four wow something like that crazy yeah it it was crazy i don't know anyway yeah so yeah no divorce is pretty common like my biological mom has been divorced what <laughs> she on marriage number four uh something like i that. think so marriage number four so you know i mean really she's it, it doesn't mean anything and i think you know not that you know people that have been married a couple of times you know that there's judgment but i think i think sometimes it can lose its meaning yeah i don't know since this is Thread's Life Unfiltered, I, I have to be honest. When I heard Larry talk about his multiple divorces, I was just kind of like, huh? Yeah. What? This guy's a Christ follower? I just went like the snap judgment and was like, oh, wait a second. Who am I to judge, first of all? Well, and, that's because of your worldview and your, like how you were raised. Yeah. And like it, you just don't do that. Right. And, yeah. and you don't proclaim you know, your faith in Christ and go through divorce. Like you stick things out. But, you know, we don't, I, I'm trying to remember if he said why those happened, but it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't ours to, you know, judge who knows, yeah. who knows what happened. And, you know, like I met a lady today who has been married a couple of times and 
you know, the first marriage lasted for 90 days or something. <laughs> Interesting. I'm like, how does that work? No and I'm kidding. like, no, it is sort of my job to judge her a little bit because I'm <laughs> assessing her. Yeah. But, Are you know. You fit for this role? <laughs> yeah. Um, not to give away everything I do. But, um, you know, I, I think I get caught in that too. But I don't know. I think I'm a little bit more accepting of that just because... I grew up with that being somewhat normal. Like yeah, my sure. uncle was divorced a couple of times too. So that wasn't like anything weird or abnormal. Mm -hmm. So another thing that Larry spoke about kind of, it goes right along with the fact that his parents were divorced w when he was young. So it sounds like uh, mom got to keep the house and the house was in a, I guess you could say a well-to-do area, and but Larry and his family were not well-to-do after the divorce, and Larry acknowledged that he and his family received welfare benefits, and again, coming from my sheltered worldview, I don't think I even knew that welfare was a thing until <laughs> like high school. Like It was just never part of... My day-to-day -day experience, I went to a, a Christian school where everybody was very much well-to-do and put together, and you just don't hear about that kind of thing. And then I go to high school, and it rocked my world in many ways, and, and for the better, and I started hearing about kids who get free lunch, and I hear about kids who, you know, they have insurance through the state or whatever the case may be, and I'm just like, what is this? And I would have conversations with family and oftentimes it was such a negative view of public assistance yeah. and it's like it's just so i don't know so odd to me well i think it speaks of your privilege yeah i mean as much as you know you don't like that necessarily when i say that but that just you like to call me out on that well maybe like isn't the right i don't word, know if but. like but i I am going to call you on it because I think it's something to recognize. But I think, you know, you grew up relatively stable. Like, I bet you never saw government cheese before. Nope. Like a block of government cheese. I don't know if you did, Jason, either um, when you're listening to this. I, I don't did think hear did. the story about government cheese on NPR, however. Uh, sure you did. Again, <laughs> another white male thing to do. Listen to NPR. Fine. But... I'm just saying, you know, I, I, we got welfare. I know we did. We got boxes of food. And I remember the government cheese is like this huge, I don't know, three pound block of this processed crap mm -hmm. cheese. I mean, it's super embarrassing as a kid. I mean, I remember, I mean, yeah, we got food stamps and stuff and they actually used to be like, it wasn't a card like it is now. Like hmm. now it's like a benefit card. A bridge card, card bridge that you card swipe. Or That's when I really, yes, sorry, I had to interrupt with bridge card. I was a cashier at Family Fair in high school and that's when I started seeing a lot of the bridge yeah. cards. But when I, I remember in the early 90s growing up, they were actual like paper, like stamps. You need to move your mic so that it's like, there you go. Sorry. I'm trying to get comfortable over here and it's not working. So they were actual paper stamps like Interesting. that would have a dollar amount like for food stamps. Like almost like dollar bills. Yeah. That's where the food stamp yeah. term kind of came from. So I, I know, I mean, I don't know the whole level of what kind of public assistance we were on or anything like that, but I know that we definitely received it for sure. Mm. And I know she still does. And, you know, I don't know. It bothers me a little bit. But at the same time, like, I know we were those kids that got, we always got free and reduced lunch, like always got free lunch. But if we hadn't, I wouldn't have eaten at school yeah. when I was a kid, like got breakfast and lunch and for free. And I don't know. Yeah. I, and once I figured out what it was and then I put two and two together when I saw my paychecks from the grocery store. I was like, I am so glad that I'm helping with this. Like, that's what we should do for each other. Mm -hmm. um, but again, growing up in the home that I did, nothing against my parents. We just see things a little bit differently in some ways. And um, and then going off to Los Angeles in college, 
that changed everything for me. And I think it's since then that I've been, I don't know, I don't want to say woke. I feel like that's such a cultural word. Uh, yeah. But no. aware. Aware is better than woke. I don't yeah. think. I can't say I'm woke. I don't think you're woke yet. Oh, okay. I don't think I am either. Oh, okay. It's okay. <laughs> We're getting there. Yes. So it's just... Yeah, just the whole welfare thing and the divorce thing. Like, hearing Larry tell his story, I was just like, man, that is so different than what I grew up with. Well, and having, you know, a parent with a mental illness, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, some pro- and you know, having an incarcerated parent. Yes, no You know, kidding. I actually could relate to a little bit more of his background and upbringing. Sure. For sure, than you, mm-hmm. you know, but... Yeah. Um, and another thing that he talked about that really piqued my interest was the fact that he remembers when his school was integrated. Yeah. And he remembers that the black kids went to a different school. Like, yeah, how awful that would be. Yeah. I mean, of course, I want my daughter to have black friends and be in touch with her cultural identity. However, I don't want her to to grow up in a world where she's separated from everybody else just because of the color of her skin. And I can't imagine being a parent um, and having to deal with that. Yeah. Well, and then, too, I mean, I'm sure the black school didn't have nearly the amount of resources and money that the white school did. And, um, you know, because that's so it's so disproportionate. It is. Um, and it still is. Yeah. You know, you look at Grand Rapids Public School is, and it's like that because all the white people that have the means can transport their kids to school of choice or send them to charter schools. And so you have these inner city schools that are full of kids of color and there's little parental involvement mm-hmm. because it, they're just not able to be there. You know, yep. parents are working and not able to be involved in school and the ones that could be there have chosen to send their kids elsewhere and i mean we were (laughs) we were offenders of that i mean we We sent stefan to a charter school and then did school of choice until we moved to our district and you know i'm not i don't know that i would do it over again i don't know if i would change that um that decision that we did make for him but i can just see how that contributes to a bigger problem Mm -hmm. so yeah i do think that would be really crazy though to remember that desegregation of the schools um but it's just such you know that was that was one step and we still have so far to go we do in we that way absolutely I do and i don't know how kentucky is or was you know with like all the jim crow and everything yeah. um because it's a little more so- south than here mm-hmm. but i mean even here we have our own set of racism issues and things like that but I don't know. It would it would have been very interesting to remember that and live through that. Yeah. Sorry, I just heard your fade out real quick and I then it came back. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah. So even though there are so many things that separate or uh, not separate. I mean, Larry and I, we don't have a whole lot in common as far as our upbringing goes. You're making just as much noise as I am. I know. Man. I was just yelling at Ben, and I'm dropping things, and <laughs> I'm moving all around. I'm just not very comfortable. But but I'm curious to know, despite the differences in our upbringing, did you notice any similarities between Larry and I? Well, the one that I thought about was when he was telling the story about the girl, the drunk girl who just got in his car. <laughs> And she thought she called an Uber, but she really didn't really didn't or he wasn't the Uber that she called. And so he ended up driving her. Now, granted, he only drove her a mile away. um, But just thinking about like those good Samaritan type stories and thinking about your antics with people and (laughs) trying to be helpful. Um, Jason, I don't know if you've ever heard this story, but before Ben and I got married, um, when he was living (laughs) in Oregon, so he moved to Oregon after graduation which was in may and we got married in august so from may basically the middle of may until august he was living there by himself and i was living back in michigan with his parents 
And um, so he was bored and by himself a lot. And so one day he, you were in Vanita, right? Mm-hmm. I was at yeah. Ray's. He was at the grocery was store lunch. and there's these people that are hitchhiking. And so he decides to pick up these people and he's like, where are you going? And they say, we're going to Brookings. Now, if you pull out a map, Brookings is on the <laughs> Oregon coast, but it's like the last city before you get to California. Okay. So we're talking about, oh gosh, probably three and a half, four hour drive oh, from yeah. where he was. Yep. And so he's like, okay, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> it was my day off. It was his day off. So he um, calls me and says, yeah, I picked up some hitchhikers and I'm giving them a ride to Brookings. <laughs> I'm sitting there with his mom and she's like, he's what? I'm like, yeah, you heard me. He's giving hitchhikers a ride. And she's like, what is he doing? Why is he doing that? I'm like, I don't know. And so he drives these people four hours and then turns around and drives back. They were some of the most amazing people, though. It was a mother and her son. And yes, they were hippie hitchhikers. And yes, they smelled like it. Um, But they were so kind. And their whole mission, what they were doing that summer, um, was just hitchhiking around the country and finding places to volunteer. And... That's what they were doing. They made no plans for where they were going to go or sleep. They just had, we want to go to Brookings, then we're going to go south into California. That their would ultimate, never have worked for me. Their ultimate goal was to get down to Mexico because they wanted to work with an orphanage there. How they would cross the border, I don't, I don't know, but that's what they were doing. And I, there's something about that lifestyle that I've always found appealing. Like I've always uh-huh. had a dream of, Having a school bus and converting it to a home and mm. um, and just living out on the road. And so to just be able to help those people do that, it was really fun. Yeah. So, you know, this 22-year-old guy or however old you were, I think 22, you know, just driving people around. And so I think, you know, that plays into now when his, you know, unmentionable Uber <laughs> slash not on app yeah. ride share <laughs> experiences yep. I, I thought some of that stuff was a little bit similar just you know I, I you've had some similar stories so i just like that quality like that dad mm-hmm. like dad talk quality kind of stuff i noticed some of those similarities yeah and just um the other thing that struck me that i thought was kind of similar is I think Larry was saying, like, when he gets into something, he researches it like crazy. <laughs> That's how he found the GR Rideshare podcast. Yeah. And so, I, like, that, like, made me think of you, too, because you do the same thing. Oh, like, yeah. Now, I found all kinds of kayak groups on Facebook. Exactly. I was just going to say that. I mean, now Ben's obsession is kayak. So, we'll see how long this one lasts. But, um, yeah. This has been, like, five years of waiting for a kayak. Okay. But, anyway, he, um, you know has done a lot of research and i'll give him that but mm-hmm. you know he he does the same thing like he's, i do he's very good at researching I, I i will say oh i'm wondering about this and he'll send me like 18 different <laughs> things or let's do it now so uh yep like the kitchen remodel i yeah. found all kinds of cupboards and things uh-huh so uh yeah so i think despite our differences there's definitely some clear things that are similar between Larry and I. Um, One of the questions that my awkward self decided to ask Larry was, if you were to be stranded on a desert island, who would you rather be with, Ben or Jason? And he jokingly said me at first, and so I was like, yes, win, because he said that I would have a kayak and we could kayak off the island. But, but then uh, Jason said, no, you don't have a kayak. Yeah. It's just you on the island. So then with it just being the two human beings, he chose Jason. I I don't know. I don't. It didn't really bother me because honestly, I could totally see why Jason's older, um, has a little bit more street cred and knowledge about how to survive. Like, That's I don't know fair. if I could make it on a desert island. I'm kind of a little bit bougie yeah a little bougie and i think that's like that's always been true i can't think of a time where i wasn't a little high maintenance Mm, yeah and i i'm okay with admitting it now but i don't think i really 
was comfortable acknowledging it. I don't know if you're bougie, but I don't think you're bougie. High maintenance. Things need to be a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're not, I get cranky. Like, if if it's too hot to go kayaking when I have time to go kayaking, I I get cranky. Maybe that's a little bougie. Yeah. So, you know. Maybe you are a little more bougie than me. I think I might just be. Sometimes. I don't know. Depends on what it is. That's true. Mm Mm-hmm. Interesting. Although your dining choices are more bougie than mine. What do you mean? You're... It's always so hard for you to pick where to go. And I recommend something, and it's like, I don't want Qdoba. Well, yeah, because it's Qdoba. (laughs) Bougie. Whatever. (laughs) Uh, One of the terms that Larry used a couple of times when talking about his family was bonus kids. I liked that. That was really... That's awesome. Yeah. So his current... That's not a... Sorry. His wife. His wife. Why does it need to be current? Sorry, Larry. Um, yeah, his wife has kids from a previous marriage as well. And Larry has really taken them in like a dad. And he calls them his bonus kids. And he goes and visits them at college. And when they come home, he spends time with them. I just think it's so cool that he made that choice to do that. Because um, the kids are older. And he could just as easily have said uh you know what those are her kids i'll kind of let her do her thing i'm not going to get in the way but he he's intentionally choosing to be involved in their lives as a father figure even though they're young adults i just think that is very commendable yeah i think so too i like that um bonus kids you know kids are kids they're not step kids they're not adopted kids or foster kids or whatever they're just kids they're kids so i like that bonus kids yeah, kind of idea. I thought that was good. Um, speaking of terms that Larry used, have you ever heard of a woohoo girl? Uh, no. <laughs> that was. <laughs> I just started laughing at that term. I'm like, what the hell is a woohoo girl? But apparently, Nashville's becoming a bachelorette scene for bachelorette parties. Um, that makes sense. And it's yeah. The, they call them the woohoo girls. Okay. And apparently, he gets a lot of Uber Why? and Lyft they go, rides. Woo-hoo! Yeah, apparently. That's weird. Going up and down the street, they'll let out a woohoo at a bachelorette party. Okay. I, I guess that's how it works, Larry. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's what I think that's what it is. That's interesting. I would have never thought of Nashville to be a destination for bachelorette parties, but well, that makes sense, though. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, before we wrap this up, Larry tossed out a challenge towards the end of the podcast and I don't know how I feel about it, but we've talked on the podcast, Jason and I have talked about praying with our wives Mm -hmm. more times than you and I have prayed together in the last year. I'm sure we talk about it often on the podcast, but it just doesn't ever happen. So here we are. And, um, What are your thoughts on the whole praying with your spouse and then the praying for 30 days? Well, I don't, I don't know about this 30 day thing. Cause here's my thing. Like I don't, I'm not opposed to doing it, but I don't want to do something that's forced. Yeah. I agree. And not genuine. So if you're doing it to check something off a list, then I don't, I don't think I like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not opposed to doing it, but like I said, I, I'm not going to do it because I have to. Yeah. I don't want to do it because Larry told me I need to do it. I want to do it because I genuinely want to connect with you in that way. And I think it could be good. Well, and here's what I think, too. I don't think God wants us to be robotic about it. And I don't mm-hmm. think he wants religion or rituals or things like that. Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So why do you think it is that... It's common among Christian couples, because Jason and I have heard this from numerous other couples. Why do you think it is that um, husbands and wives seem to have, you know, their own spiritual journeys? And I know you read the Bible, and I do too, and I know you pray and go to church. You do all the Christian-y things. I know you're active in your faith, and so am I. It's just the thing that we do together is church as a family. Beyond that, it's really... 
kind of individualized for us. And I think that's really common. I'm just curious from your perspective, why do you think that is? I don't know. Do why think isn't it wrong? I wouldn't go so far to say it's wrong, but it's different than what I see in scripture, I think. I'm not really sure exactly. I don't know. I don't think it's wrong, no. Hmm. But I do feel like I think scripture talks about families experiencing Christ together. And um I have conversations with both kids about So that. do I. It's just so, like you and I don't. We have conversations about things sometimes though. It's like you at you are acting as if we never talk about it. I guess I have a guilty complex about it for some reason. Well, and I think that's the problem. And I think, again, let's trace it back to its origin. I grew up in a home where every single night we would sit down before dinner and have some sort of a devotional. And honestly, there were a lot of nights where I was just like, we're just doing this because it's what we always do. We pull out the keys for kids, you read the devotional, and you go on about your day. And we don't do that. And so maybe there's a level of like, hmm, maybe I should be doing that and I'm not. So therefore, I'm guilty. I don't think you have anything to be guilty about. I think actions speak a lot louder than, you know. For sure. Reading some devotional about about Billy letting the dog out and then lying or whatever, you know, I mean, and some of those just aren't, I don't know, I think they're cheesy. They kind of are. They really are. I mean, I, I, you know, tonight, I don't know why, but on the walk, Miracle was talking about how she was holding the dog the other day and this little pink thing popped out of his private area. What is oh that? And so we had to talk about that. And she's like, well, can like... What does he do with that? And so somehow we had this conversation about dogs getting neutered. I, this is going somewhere, I promise. What does this have to do with faith? It does. Hold on. <laughs> Wait just a minute. So we, so somehow we started talking about sex and how, I don't know, but she, I said, you know, you won't, she said, humans do it better than animals or we do it better. And I said, well, you don't, not until you're married. Mm-hmm. She goes, or until I'm older, right? And I said, and married. And she goes, well, that's what you say. And I said, no, that's what God says mm-hmm. in his word. And she was talking about today how, you know, she had shared with Mrs. Layasa that she started her period. Oh, goodness. And she goes, oh, it's because of Eve. And Miracle's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so apparently Mrs. Layasa told her the story about Adam and Eve and everything like that. And so, I mean, we talked about that tonight, too. And so, you know, her and I have conversations Absolutely. about this sometimes. And, you know, I, I just don't I don't know that it needs to be this forced ritualistic thing. I don't I don't do rituals. I enjoy my freedom in Christ. And I don't think that I have to have some prayer devotional checkbox thing that I do mm-hmm. each day. I don't know. Yeah. I I don't know that we don't have conversations about things. Like we've we've I we feel do. Like we've talked about like we talked about like transgender issues mm-hmm. and you know homosexuality a lot lately and some of that kind of stuff and like how Jesus would respond to some of this racism and this the kind of stuff that's going on. So I don't know that we don't have conversations. I think that you are just making up something that you think needs to happen because we're not checking off a box. I don't know. And you're still not talking directly into your microphone. Well, I'm sorry. This mic kind of sucks. <laughs> it's because of how it's positioned, but it's okay. It's really terrible, actually. There you go. <laughs> and then it falls out and hits her in the lips. It's not going well. I... Maybe you could flip that whole thing over. Who put this on here? Stefan. That's the problem. I'll just hold it as <laughs> though I'm going to sing. It looks like you're about to do a special music at church. Lord. Speaking of church, I saw a couple people from Berkeley at the concert series oh, tonight. Yeah? So that who? was kind of fun. Oh, you don't have to say who. But. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, so so Larry, I I I respect your challenge and I see the value in the challenge. Um I think we can make it a goal to pray together more. Certainly. I just don't know that putting a 30 day on it is something that we're interested in. I don't know. Sometimes we don't even go to bed at the same time. <laughs> it's like true. all week I think I've been in bed before him. So Yep. You know, because there's podcasts to record and edit and soccer programs to run and Mike stands to just pull completely off the desk. It's just not working anymore. <laughs> so it's a fail. That was, but that's okay. Um, anything else stick out to you from the episode? I don't think so. I have to say, I love how Jason put Miracle's little rap in right after... I asked the question about who Larry would be stranded on an island with. Like yeah. there was like this, it was like perfect. I mean, yeah, it was good. It's those nice editing, yeah, well done on that, Jason. I just laughed when I heard that. I was Her like, that was genius. Is too much. That girl is too. <laughs> she's too much. Yes, but she's doing really well lately again. Um, yeah, better than she was. Tuesday morning was a shit show, but yeah. But, That's okay. She's she's hormonal and she's a mess. Yeah. Poor, poor kid. Thing. She's only 10. You shouldn't have to deal with that when you're no, 10. No, you really shouldn't. And it like, went away and then it came back and now it's back with a vengeance. And mm. this poor kid, you know, no she kidding. just can't catch a break. But yes, she is doing a little better this week. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah. Cool. Well, um, it's late. Uh, we both have to get up for work in the morning and shuffling kids around again and uh, hoping to get a kayak trip in with the family this weekend. Um, Stefan told me that he doesn't like kayaking unless there's rapids. So, Lord. I know. Like, kid, you haven't even been on rapids in a kayak. What are he's you talking angsty, about? A little bit. Yep. He's angsty, but he's also turning into this like super cool, like, I don't know. Camp was good for him. Yeah. He's, I, I've heard from just so many people recently that he's just such a kind, like, great kid. And yeah. I had to go in his room today um, to fix the egress window. Funny story. We put this egress window in to make it a legal bedroom and with exit to, through the, like, the egress window in the basement. And there's a screen that you have to take off. Well, I decided to put up a blind so that he could, you know darken his room even more now it's a cave seriously and cave. so but when i put the blind up the brackets <laughs> they were totally blocking the screen from coming out so i told him the other day please practice exiting your your room through the window and he's like i can't get the screen off dad i was like <laughs> really really but then I went down there today to check on it because I remembered that conversation. And sure enough, he was right. I couldn't even get the screen off. So then I was like, what in the world? And then I looked up and realized that I had put the brackets like overlapping the screen. So you could not get the screen off. So I fixed that and now he can exit safely. All of that to say, when I went into his room, on his bed, right by his pillow, was his Bible. And... Of course, I want my son to read the Bible, but I don't, like, push him to. So, all on his own initiative, he's been reading his Bible, apparently. Yeah, apparently. I don't know. And uh, that's just really cool. And he also wanted to hang out with his sister tonight. Like, Yeah, what? he asked last night if he could, and I told him it wasn't going to work last night. And he said, rip, rip, And rip. he still followed through and did it tonight they watched tv in her room and they were wrestling and they were doing flips <laughs> on her bat her bed and futon and then apparently she t she told me that stefan said we should do this more often and That's... she's like mom this is not normal <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. so that was really cool yeah so it's been a busy but a good week here in the crocker house and um Really glad we had a chance to just sit down and talk, even if it's on a podcast. Right. And uh, yeah, so I think we're going to sign off now. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and taking part in episode 35. Um, stay tuned. We've got a couple of interviews 
one that we've done already with our friend Gabe, who uh, kind of rocks my world a little bit th- the night that uh, we recorded, and you can hear all about that and what the revelation was that kind of threw me for a loop, and Jason. Um, that'll be coming out soon, and uh, we're also going to be live recording on Sunday night, um, which is the 17th? No, that's not right. The 14th? <laughs> yeah. The fort. Thank you, my wife. Mm-hmm. Live recording with, it's kind of weird, a sci-fi author and Jason's neighbor. Um, so that's about all I know. I met him once. He came to observe a GR Rideshare podcast. Apparently he wrote a sci-fi book and he's got a really good story. So Okay. Be watching for that live stream coming out on Sunday night. And, uh, of course, the audio version will drop as well. Um, Do us all a favor and share this episode. Write us a review on iTunes. Super easy through podcast app on iPhone. There you go. Now that I have an iPhone again. Yes. I will not hold that against you, but I still love my Android. Nope. I don't. So... All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for being a part of this experiment. We are a year in. I have just thoroughly enjoyed the last year, and I'm excited to see what year two brings. And uh, thanks for being a part of the journey with us. Have a great day. Good night.